Hi, and welcome to Logic Studio Training. I'm Graham English, and today you're about to crack the ToonTrack multi-output code. Let's start with a completed project to show you how it should look and work, and then we'll create it again from scratch so it's perfectly clear. The project you'll be able to download from LogicStudioTraining.com has four screen sets. Everything, just Easy Drummer, just the mixer, and just the arrange window. We'll start exploring screen set two. Notice the default perspective is drummer perspective. We can change this in the mixer, and it's a good idea to do it early, or you can get confused with your stereo sources. And if you're new to mixing drums, here's a couple tips. It's not going out on a limb to say that audience perspective is most common, but anything goes. Keep in mind that you can treat these kits as live kits that were mic'd by professional recordists and played by professional musicians with amazing instruments in amazing spaces. Reversing a pair of stereo mics without reversing all of them can potentially create unwanted problems with stereo imaging and phase. Again, anything goes, but now you know. The main area is where you can switch drums by clicking on the triangles. Other kits will be different and include different drums and layouts. Once you've got it the way you like it, you can save it as a mixer preset. You can also load the presets that were installed with the kit. Choose different Easy Drummer expansion kits in the middle menu. And an easy to miss help button. Get help and quick access to user folders. Each kit comes with a PDF of the kit description. It's very useful if you want to learn about the different drums and different drum heads used. It also comes with a keyboard layout. You've got lots of samples to play with, so this will be a good guide to check out. Moving to the lower part of the interface, you can open the mixer and you can open the grooves. You can scroll sequentially through the different grooves here. You can loop the internal player, modify tempos, modify the velocity level, and even humanize the grooves. The Groove Browser gives you lots of excellent performances by different musicians as well as the drummer on the recording session. You can drag and drop them into the Arrange window here and here. Let's look at the mixer in detail. You have access to your mixer presets here. In the Rock Solid kit, you have bleed control on your stereo overhead mics. If bleed is off, you only hear the cymbals. If bleed is on, the mic bleed is included. Bleed will probably sound more natural because it mimics what you'd be mixing with if you had a real drummer. If you want more isolation, you can turn it off. Here's where you switch the panning of stereo tracks once you've chosen the drum perspective you want. As I said earlier, default is drummer perspective, and it's a good idea to set this early. You can solo and mute individual mics and adjust the fader level. With every level at 0 dB, you might find that your channel and Logic Pro will clip, and you'll almost certainly find your stereo out very close to clipping and leaving you very little headroom. Lots of pros primarily use pre-fader metering. A major benefit is that you're metering the input level and you become aware of the channel level and potential clipping that occurs before any plugins are added. I'll demonstrate. To turn on pre-fader metering, right-click on the transport bar. Click Customize. Choose pre-fader metering. It's also a good idea to change your metering to sectional dB linear scale. This provides the best resolution through the entire level range. Exponential scale focuses on the upper level range, and it's more useful when you need to focus on what the top 6 dB are doing. With a default kit mix chosen and faders set to zero, 
Let's play a full kit section and see what happens. You're already clipping and have no headroom for effects, dynamics, or the addition of the rest of the music. Since we have tons of headroom in Logic Pro, don't be afraid to use it. Drop all the faders negative 10 dB. Now we have more headroom and your mix will sound better. I also put gain plugins on all the channels in case I want to change the gain from the mixer. Let's set up a multi output instance of Easy Drummer from scratch. Choosing multi-output creates eight stereo auxiliary tracks, which you can access by clicking the plus sign. You can make it 14 mono tracks along with the original stereo track by monitoring just one side of the other stereo tracks. This will allow you to add another track. The first two tracks have to be stereo. Logic Pro won't let you mono it, even if you want to, and you can tell that by the stereo indicators below the meters. They're not there, so you can't edit them. Since we have to put something stereo there, we'll put either our stereo room, stereo toms, overheads, or compressed stereo track. Let's open Easy Drummer then rock solid. You'll see the samples load down here. Open the mixer, set our audience perspective, put all faders at negative 10, Choosing multi-channel auto-distributes each mic into a stereo pair. You could leave it this way if you want, but if you want a mono kick and a mono snare for a traditional drum mixing approach, we have to do some additional routing. Let's put the room in one, kick and snare in two, hi-hat and mono room in three, Toms in four, overheads in five, and the compressed room mic in six. Seven and eight remain unused. Pan the kick and snare hard left and right, same with the hi-hat and mono room. Back in the mixer, we select the correct stereo pair in Easy Drummer. Rooms in the first pair, kick and stare in second pair, hi hat and mono room in third stereo pair.
toms in fourth. Overheads in fifth. Don't forget to choose the correct side of the stereo pair like I almost just did. Let's put our compressed room mic in six. The sixth stereo pair, that is. Seven and eight remain unused. Let's go to screen set one and name our tracks. Double click one of them tab over in between. Comparing what I've got with the old version, it looks like I might have reversed the overhead and toms. So let's double check that really quickly. Toms are in the fourth stereo pair, overheads are in the fifth stereo pair. So we're good for this version. Select all the tracks that don't have a track in the arrange window. Before we do, we'll get rid of this room that we don't need. Select them again. Use the key command, Control T and watch what happens in the Arrange window. It creates an Arrange track from the Mixer Channel track. You can also right-click to get to this command. Now you can edit MIDI, automation, and do other Arrange window functions to these tracks. Let's drag our MIDI pattern down to test it. Looks like my overheads might not have been routed correctly. This is the correct stereo pair. It's the fifth stereo pair. So we have one, two that you can't see, three, four, which is the second, five, six, which is the third, fourth, and then the fifth one. Now let's play it again. Excellent. Once you've got it set up how you like it, you can save this as a template from the file menu. I hope you found this Easy Drummer multi-output tutorial helpful. If so, consider becoming a premium member to get more tutorials like this. Thanks a lot for watching.